Hello again, Steve here. I was just out for a little run and ran across this park and I thought of a few things to share. It's like, wow, I had to stop, interrupt my run into about a mile and a half probably right now and got about another half mile to go. But that's all right because as I hope to explain here, there's no need for formalities in this operation, I would say. Now, I've talked a lot about this, not that, that I'm any, any, any uh, buddy who's informed at all, although at one time I was a fitness instructor and wrote a book on it, Optimum Health, it's out of print now, but that doesn't make me a, an expert or anything. Just a little bit of a, an enthusiast from time to time. Because of the benefits of it, I, my, my approach is that our bodies have been, are meant to be moved. That's how we kind of evolve. That's, you look at a baby, they want to move, they're constantly moving. Animals are always moving. And therefore, if we move our muscles, uh, we have a beneficial side effect physiologically, mentally, stress-wise, health, the whole, whole gamut. And I think what's most important, because we've been bipeds, which means that we walk on our hind legs, our biggest muscles are in our legs, they're the farthest from our heart. When we move them, we actually prevent those ugly veins that we see in people's legs by squeezing the muscles and squeezing the blood to keep moving, keep moving along. And of course, those biggest muscles moving give us the greatest benefit if you will, in terms of cardiovascular and this sort of thing. Now, there are people who do not have legs or don't have use of them, and that's fine too. They might have arms that they can do this, apply this whole thing to in terms of exercise. Now, going out to walk or jog or cycle or swim, whatever it is, uh, especially things that we use our hind legs for, we might think that just benefits our leg muscles only, but that is not the case. The next time you're out walking, or jogging or riding your bike or whatever, just poke around your abdominal abdominal area and just see how how firm it is and how much flatter it is when you're exercising. It's called core, core strength supports your body. And when your when your body is moving a lot, it everything kind of tightens up so that you are um, you, you become more um, firm and stable, right? And all those little muscles are they're not just tightened up in one spot, they're constantly contracting, relaxing, contracting, relaxing, contracting, relaxing, every time we move one leg and the other kind of thing. So we also uh, develop our cardiovascular system because we're running on an anaerobic system, usually when we're doing especially slower pace, um, walking, slow pace jogging, slow pace cycling, this sort of thing. This promotes the also fat burn, which if people are interested in that, it's great and we gain endurance. And endurance, of course, can be great for so many other things in our lives. A lot of us are busy with children and our jobs and so on. We can all use more endurance. And on top of it all, we increase our metabolism. There's a thing called afterburn when we do physical exercise, which is, of course, our metabolic rate is up while we're running because we take more calories. But we also have an elevated metabolic rate for a time period afterwards up to I think it's 12 hours or 24 hours depending on how much we do and that you know helps us to it improves our our digestion and so on if we are have a tendency to overeat or something like that now I talk about a couple of don't needs in my opinion because a lot of times when people think about doing some exercise, saying, oh my God, I gotta do this, I gotta do that, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. And a lot of this stuff is, is just not necessary, in my opinion. For example, we don't need a partner. And a lot of people I know are very social, they're very extroverted, they have a really, really hard time getting out and doing something on their own. When I was in the military, there was this one guy who we used to hang out with, he just, it seemed like he couldn't do anything on his own. He couldn't go to the mall, he couldn't go out on his own. It was just, he never had, right? But I find that if you have to wait around for somebody, it can be a hang up and we, can, we have a harder time to be spontaneous. You know, for example, I just got home from work and I didn't even bother changing. I just out the door and went. And that's it, didn't have to wait around for a partner, right? We also, I'll just mention this one thing, we don't need expensive wear. If you look at what I'm wearing here, and of course, if weather was different, I would wear a jacket in the winter, I'd wear a big flop hat and so on. It can all be done in the winter and so on too. I just have an old ratty old t-shirt that I work with. I have basic work pants, if you can see them, 
with bulgy pockets, still have my wallet in there. I've got really, really ratty looking shoes, but they have a decent sole on them. And they are almost over the hill. But they got a good sole. And so they probably the only thing we need that's decent for a lot of leg work is a decent pair of shoes. We gotta make sure we take care of our of our feet, right? And if it's a challenge, I can talk about impact later on, but walking, cycling, these sorts of things. It's important to take care of ourselves. We don't need whether you wear a pair of shorts or your loose baggy pants that you get home from work for, doesn't really matter. You're not running a marathon, right? That that's my impression. We also don't need memberships to gyms and such. Um, I, I find that sometimes they are beneficial. Other times, once again, it's sort of like having a partner. You gotta get there, right? Whereas I got home, I only got a bit of time. Last night, I did a couple of rounds of the block uh, after I'd gone to a Toastmasters meeting because I hadn't done anything. And it was close to 10 o'clock at night. I don't have to go to a gym. I'm not gonna go to a gym then and get there and come back and so on. Just around the block a few times and that's it. Now, I'm going to finish this off with a couple of uh, a point, a point of, as to why we're doing it. And I, I would say that one of the things in order to be able to continue to do exercise is to really know why we're doing it. To know that we're doing it for ourselves, right? For the benefit that we can have for ourselves, so we can have a better quality of life. The minute we we're doing it for vanity or to get a tighter butt so we get laid more often or something like that that sort of stuff can fade right but if it's a it's if it's a deeper purpose that it's almost like we're custodians of our bodies I find that works works better now just a few little tips here that I've learned over the years and I'm getting up there in the years uh, biologically you know close to 50 and I find that my joints are the key to watch and I used to always teach this when I was a fitness instructor too it doesn't matter what age Muscles can heal a lot faster, they're more adaptable. Joints, if there's a joint injury, it takes longer to heal. So, we've got to be very careful about our bones and our joints. And therefore, warm up is very, very important. And also, if you haven't done exercise in a while, I'd probably suggest talk to somebody, somebody who's competent in this area. And just go really easy. Go really easy. The biggest, the biggest thing to have of anything is an attitude. Is an attitude that this is going to happen and it doesn't matter that I win the race tomorrow, right? It's like I used to tell people who would sit, tell me they can't exercise, they don't have time, but you, meanwhile they came down to the gym, right? And I would ask them, do you have three minutes? Do you have two minutes every day? And they say, well, what's two minutes for? I'll say, well, put your sneakers on. Um, and then what? And then take them off and go to work. What's that going to do? Well, it's going to do nothing for physical health, but what it's going to do is going to work on the attitude, the habit, the habit attitude. If you can put your shoes on every morning at a certain time with the intentions of going out the door, you don't have any more time, then take them off. But do that every time. And then when you want to up the ante, put the shoes on and step out the door. And then do what? Step back in, take the shoes off, go to work. What's that going to do? Nothing for physical health, but everything for attitude and everything for building a habit. And then there'll come a time, go to the end of the end of the driveway and back and that's not going to do anything for physical either it's going to do something for attitude but in time you keep it up eventually it's down to the end of the block and back and then it's around the block and then it's down a few more blocks then you start doing something the attitude has been built and now you can have a physiological effect but through it all though be really careful with the joints is what i say really careful have that as the weak link almost what I, what I do is I don't start running right away if I'm going to go for a run. I walk a couple of blocks. I shake my legs gently. I don't know if you can see that. I go like this. And I stop and I twirl this with my feet. I go like this with my ankles and they usually click a few times. Once they start clicking, I know I'm getting into gear. And then the other way, and both. And then around. I just got a couple clicks right there, actually. And I swing back and forth, bring my knees up and back. Knees up and back, like that. You see, with the good sports wear on there, you know. And there's there's something about that. It's almost like as we warm up. I don't know if you've ever worked with machinery before, but on machinery, I worked a lot of. I used to work in engine rooms, and 
with farm machinery and all the, all the joints always have a grease nipples or grease certs as they've been politically re-termed now or grease fittings and you grease the joints so that everything moves nice and fine you don't get any squeaks everything works good if you keep the grease in there. in fact my job description was called an oiler at one time on a ship my job was to oil things <laughs> so I, I really I relate things to that and the joints though they're not machines they're kind of like that there is a lubrication in the joints and I forget the whole details but it's something to do with warming up when you warm up the blood starts pumping more the heart starts moving faster and things start moving into the joints and if you move through full range of motion those joints it seems like you you foster the moving in of this lubrication what I find too is when I start to jog slowly if I start to feel a little bit of a of a, of a something in the, in the hip or the knees or the ankle or whatever I'll just stop and walk a bit and I'll just shake my legs like that I might twist my ankles again gently and so on and just help it move through under no load right because after all when we're jogging or we're walking or something we're putting a fairly heavy load on the joints as we land but if we lift our leg up in the air and swing it it's almost like the joint falls away from itself gives it a little bit of room we allow that lubrication to get in there and then I find I get back on those legs again and start moving and in time after I warm up they're just as good as gold so just a few thoughts anyways on exercising how important it is especially and the, the most effective is to use the big limbs for the health benefits for the vitality the energy and the thing to, to not get hung up on is having to do all kinds of shit to get involved with it you know what just jump on your legs and get out there with your work clothes on or whatever and your wallet in your pocket and your change and your keys jangling around doesn't matter just get out there and have fun with it it doesn't matter what the weather either I did a video way back when I was taking a walk in a slew it was minus 27 or whatever just beautiful just absolutely beautiful big minus 40 boots on and you know if it's raining I was lived out, lived out on the west coast for the last few months in, in the winter there poured rain a lot of the time I went out stuck my head up into the rain just felt it coming down get soaked gonna sweat anyway so what what does it matter you know have fun with it hope this is helpful I'm gonna sign off for now get back on those legs and take this last half mile home nice talking again Steve here we'll talk again soon Bye -bye.